give you a second. Michelle, are you recording this part or are you are? Yeah, okay. I just started recording again for the okay. section. So, and are you, and you're able to share slides for me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I am going to take you for a short walk through the bylaws. You can go to the next slide. Um, a lot of people hear the word bylaws and start, you know, falling asleep like the lady with her hand in her, her head in her hand or shaking in their boots there, or just get a little bit nervous or even cowering in the corner there like that guy on the floor. Um, but I'm here to tell you that we're, we are here at, at Second District to help you with these and they don't need to be as, as scary. They kind of get a bad rap and um, are the, you know, kind of joked, it's great bedtime reading because it's going to put you to sleep. Um, what might not be the most exciting thing, it is um, like a GPS, like the other picture shows. It's, it's a guide for how your PTA unit works. Um, it provides the basic frameworks for your PTA. Um, this is something that is reviewed annually by your PTA unit, and it doesn't need to be updated except for every five years. It used to be every three years, so you might hear that still sometimes, but it actually doesn't even need to be updated um, except for every five years. I will say that um, if you haven't updated recently, that it's a good idea to, even if you're not going to make any specific changes, it's a good idea to update your bylaws right now because the new version um, automatically includes the allowance for holding teleconferencing meetings and video and Zoom and all of that. So if you haven't updated in the past um, year, I would say go ahead and do that and just reach out to District PTA and we can help you. Um, and advance to the next slide, please. So the bylaws, um, even just in my short amount of time that I've been working with the district, I've seen a lot of changes for the better with the bylaws. They've shortened them in the newer versions. Um, and so they've become a little bit easier to work with, I think. Um, the last two pages or so of your bylaws are actually referred to as the standing rules and have a little bit, um, they're handled a little bit differently. So a lot of people don't understand the difference between bylaws and standing rules. The bylaws are kind of the bigger framework, the governing structure. Um, they might talk about, what they do talk about which month your elections are held, whereas in the standing rules, they talk about um, what time your meetings are. So the bylaws are the bigger picture and the standing rules are really about what makes your unit you. Um, so in the standing rules, now they've moved things that used to be in the bylaws. So now you can get more specific about what those VP roles are. Um, you can add your standing committees there. The other great thing about having moved all the things that are very specific to your unit into those last two pages called the standing rules is you can actually change those uh, that information every meeting if you wanted to, whereas the bylaws is a little bit more of um, a formal review process. You need to have a committee, establish a committee that reviews for any changes. You get approval from your PTA board, then you send it to your district parliamentarian who sends it off for approval at the state level by CAPTA, and then it re gets returned to you. And then you would vote, uh, bring it to your membership to vote to adopt your updated bylaws. Uh, the standing rules is something that you can change at any meeting. And I note there that you could even do it without notice if you came up with, you wanted to, for example, um, say that motions and debate about motions can only last, you know, five minutes so that people don't go on and on. That's something specific you could add to your standing rules with a two-thirds majority vote. If it's something that you've already talked about um, and advertised in your agenda in advance, then you just need a majority vote to make that amendment to the standing rules. Um, let's go on to the next slide, please. So the bylaws can be a little intimidating um, with all those words. I suggest that um, the parliamentarian or someone that wants to take on the task write sort of cliff notes or a little tour guide for the, for the bylaws so that you get the key points that can be um, shared with your membership. 
It's highly recommended that all of your board members do read through the bylaws at least once and ask questions if they don't understand anything or reach out, but it's good for all board members to actually have a copy and read through the bylaws. If any member ever asks for a copy of the bylaws, um, they have a right to read those, um, but it's nice to just be able to draw up a summary. So uh, these are some of the key things that you would wanna include in your sort of cliff notes version of your bylaws. Um, it has your legal name on the first page. Um, this is important. So for example, sometimes you might refer to it as, so my kids went to Sherman Elementary. So um, Sherman Elementary PTA, well, it's actually Sherman PTA. That's the legal name, not the word elementary. And that's what's important to have on your bank account, for example. So your bylaws has your official legal name, the address of the school, um, the organization date, that's fun to see sometimes how long some of our PTA units have actually been, um, been going in San Francisco. And then we've got some new ones as well. So that's your organization date. Um, fiscal year, where most of us are on a fiscal year that ends June 30th and starts July 1st. Uh, but a few of us are, are off of that cycle, but your fiscal year is established there. It's also the place to reference all these different um, codes and numbers for the state and the IRS that um, refer specifically to your unit. It's also where you establish membership dues um, that Michelle talked about, uh, that 475 that you send off to the district PTA, actually 50 cents of that portion stays with the district to support the district and the rest goes off to the state and national PTAs. And you'll see membership dues um, anywhere from $5. I've seen them up to 20, don't usually go up beyond 20. And we can talk more about uh, membership dues. I think we have a breakout session for that. Um, it's where your elected officers are established. So in that summary, it's great for people to be able to see what types of officers there are, what, um, which ones are elected, which ones are appointed, what types of committees, standing committees that you have throughout the year. Uh, bylaws is also going to be all the information that you need about your nominating committee. So if you have questions about your nominating committee, this is the group that um, recruits and looks for next year's board members come to my breakout session. I'm gonna be leading on um, parliamentarians. We'll go deeper into nominating committee information. Um, has about your meeting times and some finance and, lot, and, mo and most of the financial information is the other place to check your bylaws for. So who can sign checks, when and who does the audits um, and how much your board can spend or authorized expenditures in between membership meetings. Um, and wanna advance to the next slide, please. So um, at the end of this training, I'll be leading the parliamentarian breakout. If you are an incoming parliamentarian or you just wanna know more about um, how PTAs run or how to run a good meeting, you can come to that um, breakout session. We'll be doing, I'll be focusing on these three things. How exactly do we update bylaws? There's, um, and I'll go into more depth about the e-bylaws system. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about meeting management, how to make a motion. And again, as I mentioned, we'll go into the whole elections thing and the nominating committee who helps to get the officers. And so that's the end of the walk through the bylaws. Are there any questions or anything that came up in the chat? Oh, is it possible to get a copy of our current bylaws? Oh, some of the bylaws we do have copies of. We used to have, before pandemic, we used to have an office where we actually had to do everything by paper. So that's actually been an advantage of being um, in the pandemic and everything having moved to electronic. The update process has been a little bit faster. We're allowed to do it all via email. Um, and so sometimes I have a copy of that. Uh, and with a lot, a lot of the bylaws do have striked out um, parts, and that is, you know, typical and should be that way because they're the boilerplate bylaws, but they don't apply. For example, we are out of council; we don't have councils here, so all the sections about councils are crossed out. Or, as Michelle says, if you have any questions, you could raise your hand or even just unmute if you have. A question about bylaws or 
or if you can't make the breakout session later in the afternoon and you want to just ask a question about nominating committee or elections, you could do that now. You are that good, Melissa. <laughs> so maybe they'll have questions later. So um, that's great. So we're we're a little bit ahead. So we can move to uh, if nobody has any other questions about the bylaw specifically, maybe we'll just move ahead to Albert's section. Oh, there's a, there's a question. Oh, uh, for, is it Anne's hand that I see? Uh, well, it looks like we have two. There's one here in the chat that says, um, to have an appointed member of the board, do we need to have something provided for in the bylaws to permit that appointment? Um, not necessarily. So if you came up with a new um, committee, for example, and you wanted to appoint a committee chair to sit on the board, you could amend your standing rules, those last two pages of the bylaws, and you could do that at your next uh, membership meeting. So that wouldn't be a big deal to just be able to appoint a member and, and you don't have to go through a whole bylaws update. If you wanted to have, um, you know, change, some people have auditors, for example, that are not um, elected officers and you wanted to make them an elected officer, that would be an example of something you need to go through the full bylaws update process. There's another question here. Can you repeat how often the bylaws should be changed? Yeah, so you don't, annually, they should be reviewed. So every, the parliamentarian or um, should start a committee every year that just reviews. It can be one or two of you or sort of two or three of you that just reads through the bylaws. Are there any changes we wanna make? Nope, no changes then, you know, nothing. That's the end of that, don't need to do it. But every five years, they are requiring that you make an actual update to whatever the latest version is. And I'll just repeat that part that I do recommend updating if you haven't in the past year, because then the part about being able to hold Zoom conferences like this, it would automatically be a part of your bylaws for both board meetings and association meetings. Because it used to be that association meetings were not allowed to be on teleconference. Um, there is a question. Anne, would you like to unmute yourself? Uh, a question, two questions. One is, um, should that be done, review of the bylaw, be done like the very first thing of a new board because we just elected our new uh, executive board? Uh, kind of review that for going uh, for this coming year. Is that a recommended thing to do instead of well, somewhere in the middle of the year? I you can do the review process at any point in the year. That said, I highly recommend that everyone on the board review the bylaws um, thoroughly at the start of a year. It's a really good idea to be familiar with what types of things are in the bylaws and to know what's in there for the board. So at the start of the year, everyone should be reading them and be familiar with them, but the actual review process, that can start at any point during the school year. And. Uh related question the board does it have to be the parliamentarian that kind of officially does this or can the executive board just say we're going to do this together or what yeah a good question it's it's um officially part of the parliamentarian's job description however some groups may not have um a permanent um parliamentarian and so in that case certainly the board can do it um and so i think that probably answers your question yeah yeah okay there's a question from Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Melissa. So um, my question is around bylaws and um, appointed positions. And then, um, so if you're going to appoint someone, is it, do you have to vote on it as a board? And, or does the president just appoint them? And then the second question is, we didn't previously have an executive vice president. We've added that to our bylaws. Um, we've found someone who's going to be, well, we have our executive vice president, but he had been elected to a different position. So now we have to fill that one. So if you could just um, kind of run through quickly the process for the appointed positions and then filling elected positions that are now vacant because we've moved them 
Okay, awesome. but there's lots of parts. So let me know when I'm done if I missed one of those little parts. Um, so there's the uh, nominating committee that you typically will present a slate of nominees and then there's an election. So at the point at the elections that you have your elected officers, but some of those roles were still empty. At that point, it becomes the role of the board elect those new officers for the coming term to um, fill those that they get to vote on who fills in though they get to a point and vote on who fills in those empty spaces it doesn't even go to the membership at that point um, there are some roles that are always appointed and so that's the parliamentarian for example is an officer but that's that is not voted on as appointed so in that case the president makes up all all the appointments to the board so the president appoints the parliamentarian and the board votes to ratify or prove that um, and the same for standing committee chairs or any other appointed role, um, you would, again, the president appoints and then the board ratifies that. So that's not something that goes to the membership. Did that answer all the questions? And I'm not sure I answered about the part about someone switching or. Um, I think that that makes sense because we, yeah, we will just fill the um, formerly filled elected role in a, yes, I think with so. our new board. Okay, great. Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Melissa, there's um, two questions in the chat. One from Rachel, what's the process for updating the bylaws? Is there a vote needed? And then um, James asks, can you have bylaws related just to a specific PTA? I'm not sure if James wants to ask that question. A little, I'm not sure I understand that question. Can you have bylaws related just to a specific school? The, each, each unit, PTA that belongs to a school PTA has their own set of bylaws. I'm not sure if that answers that question or if there's more to that question. James, feel free to unmute if you'd like to ask for clarification. But if that's if that's a simple question is yes, each school, each unit PTA has their own specific bylaws. And then um, what's the process for updating bylaws? I'll go into this a little bit in more depth um, in the breakout session for parliamentarians, but there is definitely um, a vote needed, but the process just in kind of a step-by-step -step is the bylaws review committee meets, they establish if there are any changes or if they just want to update to whatever the latest version is, they would bring that to the board. The board approves those changes then those changes are brought through channels, meaning it's given to the district who gives it to the state um, and the state parliamentarian approves it. When they come back approved, it's at that point that you bring it to the membership. So it's, the, it's one of the few cases where it's a little bit almost um, backwards and that usually the members, well, still the membership is the final decision maker. They are the one to adopt the bylaws. Um, but the board approves this first. You wouldn't wanna bring the set of changes to the California parliamentarian um, to approve if if they was if it wasn't something that um, was approvable, for example. So they, they first kind of go through the executive board and then um, in the end the membership is the final approval. And it's a vote. So Gurley is asking, do you see her question? Yeah, so the association does not have to ratify appointments. Um, that is generally correct. So a, a president appoints the appointed members to the board, and it's the board that ratifies those, appoint, that, those appointments. Okay, I think you've gotten all the questions, but if everybody, if anybody has questions that come up, just put them in the chat, and we'll try to answer them throughout the day or join me at the um, breakout session. Exactly. Okay, I think we'll move on to, thanks Melissa, move on to Albert now. All right, um, thanks Michelle, uh, thanks Melissa. Um, Michelle, can you share your screen with us, the slides? This is the fun part, but uh, I think all presenters think their <laughs> park portion is fun, so. Uh, <laughs> And um, it, again, there's a lot of information here and uh, there's no quiz at the end. And I just want you to absorb the information from a high level. We're just establishing framework here. 
and you have resources. Um, oh yeah, Melissa says bylaws are fun too. <laughs> All right, so let's start out. See, even the slides are fun. So uh, top 10 tips for PTA presidents. Uh, first, a uh, lot of information. Uh, I just wanna reiterate some key points. Again, no quiz at the end. You don't have to remember anything. Uh, just, just pick a 